All right, guys, so it's super cool that Alex Martin has got a shot in the 450 class this year. We have been spending a lot of time here at the Club MX training facility testing and trying Alex Martin's YZ450F. This thing is made to fit Alex, which is he's a lot smaller than me, a little bit lighter than me. He's got the foot pegs raised up a little bit, the subframes cut down, and uh, there's a lot of changes made to that bike to make it set for a guy like Alex Martin. They call him the troll for good reason. So let's dive into the details about Alex Martin's bike and I'll let you know how it runs on the track. The Club MX Yamaha team has been around for a while now and they've really gained some momentum in the past few years. They signed former Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider Garrett Marchbanks back in 2021, then they signed Alex Martin for 2022, and now they've signed former 250 national champion Jeremy Martin for the 2023 season. Plus, they even have Shane McGrath on the team for the final four rounds of the 2022 national season after his Rockstar Husqvarna fill-in ride had expired. Long story short, the Club MX Yamaha team is growing rapidly. When the MXA crew flew out to South Carolina one month before the 2022 season kicked off, the team was busy setting up their brand new semi truck and trailer and wrapping it with their newest title sponsor, Muckoff. And that explains exactly why Alex Martin's bike still has the 2021 graphics on it in this video. When the Club MX Yamaha team reached out to Alex Martin, they were originally inquiring about getting him to ride a YZ250F the team. However, after spending 13 years in the 250 class riding for privateer and factory level teams, Alex Martin had made up his mind that he would race the 450 class in 2022 and luckily Club MX Yamaha made a spot for him there. When the MXA Wrecking Crew flew out to Club MX in South Carolina, our primary reason was to actually test Garrett Marchbank's YZ250F. However, Alex Martin and the team, they were still developing Alex's YZ450F for the 2022 season. So team owner, Brandon Haas, he said, hey, we're still developing the bike. We're still working on what exactly is gonna be Alex Martin's race bike for 2022. But we were all the way in South Carolina. We were spending a few days at the beautiful facility. We said, hey, can we test this bike anyways? We wanna check it out and see what it's all about. So they were nice enough to let us ride Alex Martin's bike even while he was still in the middle of developing it and figuring out what he wanted for the upcoming season. With Alex Martin being just five foot, four inches tall and weighing only 145 pounds, his bikes are always customized to his size and they're very different when compared to a stock motorcycle and a stock rider triangle. The first setting that we tried on Alex's bike had foot pegs that were five millimeters taller than stock and the subframe had been cut down by 10 millimeters millimeters to lower the seat height by almost an inch. We also tried with his Mika Metals SX Bend handlebars that were positioned further back in the Luxon MX triple clamps to suit Alec Martin's height. The foot peg to seat height on a Yamaha four stroke is already shorter than most bikes. The rider triangle is a little more cramped on the 22, 21 and earlier generation YZ four strokes. For 2023, we know that they've updated the rider triangle, but that was before this bike. So to put the bike into what Alex needed, it was even more cramped than what a stock YZ450F is. So for me, at six feet tall, I was way too far forward on the bike and way too tall on the bike, but it was still a cool experience being able to test it and ride it. So combining the compact rider triangle with the soft and loamy conditions at Club MX, it was a very sketchy and maybe a little bit dangerous of a ride, but we didn't fly all the way to South Carolina to complain to team owner Brandon Haas and the crew chief Greg at all. They warned us, hey, the bike is gonna be awkward and it's not gonna feel right for you. Do you want us to put the stock pegs on? Can we put the regular seat on? Stuff like that. I said, no, we're here to get the Alex Martin experience and that's what we were going to get. So to compensate for the chassis, I had to ride in a squatted position practically all the way around the track. I couldn't ride like I normally do. I definitely had to focus on putting my weight further back because the taller foot pegs and the lower seat just very cramped on the bike, but especially those taller foot pegs, they make you sit and uh, put your weight so much farther forward than normally. So luckily Alex Martin hadn't finalized his chassis 
decisions yet, so we also got to try even taller foot pegs, a 10 millimeter taller than stock, but also with that, he ran the stock subframe height. That also pushed the handlebars, they moved them forward in the triple clamps as well. So for me, this was actually a better chassis, but obviously the decision was up to Alex Martin on what he was gonna ride, and he was kind of going back and forth between a cut down subframe and five millimeter taller pegs, and then our standard subframe with 10 millimeter taller pegs. <laughs> On the suspension side of things, we couldn't squawk about Alex Martin's setup at all because we spent most of our time riding Alex's 450 with Phil Nicoletti's outdoor 450 suspension on the bike. So since Alex Martin was new to the Club MX Yamaha team while we were at the facility and the Supercross season was fast approaching, they actually hadn't developed any outdoor settings specifically for Alex yet. The only things that he had been riding outdoor with were Phil Nicoletti's suspension settings. They were built by Craig Decker at Enzo Suspension. So we put the motor cross suspension on Alex's Yamaha and spent a lot of time riding on the Club MX training track. And for the second day that we got to ride Alex's bike, that day we put on the Supercross suspension and we got to ride it on their amateur Supercross track, which was a cool experience as well. The one element of the Club MX Yamaha YZ450 that was awesome for us and awesome for Alex Martin is the engine package. So obviously Alex was still in the middle of developing his chassis and suspension settings, but the twisted development engine that Jamie Ellis had tweaked was something that Alex Martin had already stamped his approval on and gave a big thumbs up to. Jamie Ellis, he tweaked the engine package to create a linear engine that was just smooth revving and something that would over rev long but just be smooth off the crack of the throttle. So he reduced the compression to smooth out the power and he fine tuned the vortex mapping to eliminate any hits producing just a smooth and predictable pull coming out of the corners. It also has a full Henson clutch in it with the basket, the inner hub, the pressure plates and springs all from Henson. However, we did find out that Alex prefers the stock Yamaha fiber clutch plates because they are softer and less grabby, which actually helped Alex get better starts off of the Supercross metal grates that they have. So also inside of the engine, the team runs NGK spark plugs. And then obviously, as you can tell by looking at the bike, they run the FMF exhaust system. So we loved everything about this power band, except one thing, it was extremely loud. Whenever you put a vented air box cover on the Yamaha 450, it gets even louder with that intake right there in front of you, right there in front of the seat. He ran the P3 carbon fiber vented air box cover when we were testing the bat bike, and man, it was loud. It was awkward trying to fit on any configuration of Alex Martin's chassis, but the well-ordered power of the YZ450 made it a joy to ride. For the MXA Wrecking Crew and for me personally, this was the best YZ450 engine that I had ever touched before. We didn't have to focus on using the clutch, we didn't have to worry about when to shift it or how to carry momentum in the corners because Alex Martin's engine seemed to manage all of that as if you were riding on autopilot. It was just super smooth off the crack of the throttle, super easy to ride out of the corners and you didn't have to worry about shifting or riding a gear taller or anything like that just to hold on to the engine. And it was good because that extra brain power that we have left over from not worrying about the engine and managing the power, that helped me focus more about managing my balance over the crammed up cockpit. Some more details about the bike to shed some weight off of the YZ450F, the Club MX team equipped Alex's bike with titanium bolts everywhere possible except in the axles and the swing arm pivot because Alex actually preferred the softer and more flexible characteristics of the stock axles. The Luxon MX triple clamps at the stock 22 millimeter offset and the Luxon MX bar mounts help shave a lot of weight on this bike. Guts Racing, they gave Alex Martin the Phantom lightweight seat foam and 
that was also cut down. Phantom lightweight seat foam and gut seat cover. They dropped down a little bit of weight. The wheels, they were built by Rims Plus using milled out hubs and custom spokes to increase strength and lighten the load. And his YZ450F was also outfitted with Pirelli tires, which are also lighter than the Dunlop tires as well. And it had a Firepower Featherlight battery on it too. Alex Martin's YZ450F is built in a fairly straightforward manner with parts that anyone can buy. Besides the engine and chassis mods already mentioned, Martin's Club MX Yamaha is also equipped with a Flow Motorsports clutch perch, Flow levers, DT1 air filter, engine ice coolant, Tamer dual position hole shot device, Cerakoted stock brake calipers, Amica Metals chain, Mika Metals sprockets, and grips. Midway through the 2022 Pro Motocross season, Alex Martin announced that he would be retiring from full-time racing at the end of this season. And overall, the MXA Wrecking Crew, we are sad to see Alex Martin go, but we're happy to say that he is doing it on his own terms and we're excited to watch him grow and do his new and latest business venture, Troll Training, where Alex Martin is actually training other riders and teaching them the skills that he has learned after training and being a pro for 14 years now. Over his 13 years in the 250 ranks and now one year in the 450 class, Alex Martin has rode for a variety of privateer and factory teams like 1110 Mods Honda, Rock River Yamaha, Star Racing Factory Yamaha, Troy Lee Designs Factory Red Bull KTM, the JGR Factory Suzuki team, the Man Luck Yamaha team, and now the Club MX Yamaha team. So with experience like that, Alex Martin has ridden for the best of the best and he's ridden for a lot of variety of teams. So it really says a lot that a guy like Alex Martin would recommend the Club MX Yamaha team to his younger brother, Jeremy Martin, and get him to sign on with them for 2023. Throughout Alex Martin's 250 career, he racked up 215 starts with two national wins in 2016. One of them came at Washougal National, the other one at the Glen Helen National. He also has an impressive 22 podium finishes in the 250 class, 26 top five finishes, and 62 top tens. Plus, Alex finished second overall in the AMA 250 National point standings in 2016 and 2018. So long story short, Alex Martin has had a long and successful career in the 250 class before finishing his career with one season in the 450 class. And who knows, we've seen lots of riders coming out of retirement recently, and we aren't holding breath about Alex Martin's retirement either. You could see him back on the line just like we see a lot of other guys coming out of retirement. All in all, thanks to the Club MX Yamaha team for hosting us at their beautiful training facility in South Carolina. And thanks to Alex Martin for letting us spin some laps on his bike in between his own testing and development on the YZ450F. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. For more bike tests, for more news, race results, reviews, product tests, and more, check out motocrossactionmag.com. We'll see you in the next video.